Milwaukee County Stadium for today's interdivision matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, the Eagles come to Milwaukee with the great quarterback controversy still very much alive. Randall Cunningham was benched last week in favor of Jim McMahon, who sparked a lifeless offense to victory over the Raiders. My partner is ex-Washington Redskins offensive lineman George Stark. George Randall Cunningham back in as starter today. What are you expecting? Well, Coach Kotite expects Randall to be very nervous today. So look for a simplified game plan, both run and pass, to allow Randall time to relax and hopefully he will become for the Eagles the Randall Cunningham vote. The Packers last week, very impressive against the uh, New York Giants. Uh, they won the statistical battle, but actually lost the game. Well, they feel they've gelled as a team over the last three weeks. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a very tough New York Giants team, and they feel they would have won that game had it not been for some kicking game miscues. They think they can handle this Philadelphia Eagles team, look for a very physical and emotional game today. Typical weather conditions for southeastern Wisconsin, just a notch above freezing. The forecast actually for partly sunny today. Philadelphia has won the coin toss and will receive. And the inact is for today's game. Ty Detmer and Cecil Gray for Green Bay. The Eagles with four quarterbacks on the roster will sit down Casey Weldon and David Archer. Richie Kotite in his second season at the helm for the Philadelphia Eagles. 50-year-old successor to Buddy Ryan. And Mike Holmgren, used to uh, very balmy conditions in San Francisco in his first season here in charge of the Packers with a record of three and six, has definitely seen improvement in the team. While maybe not necessarily reflective in the record, they are playing some inspired football. Chris Jackie will be kicking off for the Packers. You see the numbers there, 34 kickoffs, four touchbacks. And he's been doing a superb job for the Packers, just missed setting a new Packer record with 13 consecutive games with the field goal. Herschel Walker back among others to receive for the Eagles. <laughs> Packers have mastered the Eagles here in Milwaukee County Stadium having a three zip record and we're underway here in Milwaukee. And it's by Sikahima. He continues his superb returns, taking it out to the 30 for the Eagles. So Cunningham will start with very good field position. You see the numbers not stellar the last four games he's played in. Looking to improve, he's got Ron Heller anchoring on the left tackle. And that's Antone Davis at right tackle. Been struggling this year, but getting better, J.B. Backs and receivers, you see the starters there, but Heath Sherman has earned some playing time. That's because Keith Byers will be playing with a broken hand. First and 10 for the Eagles. Ball spotted at the 29. Walker, the lone back. And Walker, the ball carrier. And Herschel Walker spinning ahead for maybe about three. Herschel Walker. Packer defense, we talked about at the top of the show. Hard-hitting one led by this guy here, Chuck Siegel. Cecil, that is, second in tackles. Game and uh, a very impressive defensive line. The veteran Robert Brown, one of those guys. Robert Brown has played in 101 second consecutive six, games. George Coons gives him a little speed on the outside as far as the linebacking core is concerned. And the secondary, the best guy back there, Terrell Buckley, the rookie, who is trying to get some good technique together. Complete pass from Randall Cunningham. To Fred Barnett, I think he's going to be maybe about a foot shy, maybe inches from the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. You know, they're trying to build Cunningham's confidence. We talked about it in the opening. We saw a little pa little run to Herschel Walker. Now we get a short pass to Barnett on the outside. The key here is move the chains, keep the chains moving, keep the ball in your possession, yet give Randall time to relax, get into his own personal flow. It's close enough for a measurement, and just by the tip, the nose of the ball, it is a first down. George, again, let's elaborate on that. Richie Kotite was saying he wants Cunningham to build his confidence early in the game, so he's designed the plays accordingly. Well, a lot of quarterbacks have different ways and different times of getting relaxed during the course of a game. Randall hasn't played last week, as everybody knows. He's under a lot of pressure. He wasn't playing well when they took him out. So what he wants to do now is not press too hard and give up a, a bad play, just get his own rhythm going. First
First and ten, ball at the 40. Flyers in the wing position. And way offsides is Matt Brock. We'll find out if he was drawn offsides. That's on the play. Jerry Austin is our referee today. And Coach, and Coach number 62, number 62 five yards is still first down. And you heard the call. Randall Cunningham started the season off in superb fashion. The first four games was just simply outstanding. And I guess folks were saying, gosh, he didn't miss a beat coming back from injury at all. But first and five. the successive games, he did have some difficulties. Well, they started to struggle as an offense. And this is comparing the, the two seasons in one season. 70% completion to 53%. First and five for the Eagles at the 45. Randall to pass. Good time. Decides to take off. And it stopped with a short gain. Matt Brock making up for the encroachment call. And the way the ball is spotted, it looks like Cunningham got no yardage on the play. So that will, in fact, qualify as a sack. Second and five. You know, on that pass, Randall Cunningham had a short pattern. It was just a three-step drop. He was supposed to drop three and deliver the ball. It wasn't open. Therefore, he had no place to go. He had to pull it down and try to run with the football. That time, he wasn't running too quickly out of the pocket. You saw the numbers on Green Bay's sack total. Much more aggressive. Second and five. The delayed handoff. And Walker bounces off the pile. Tries to head outside. And Herschel Walker strung out. Johnny Holland, among others, leading the tacklers and a gain of two on the play by Herschel Walker. You know, there wasn't anything in there. There was no place for Herschel to go. Green Bay feels that if they can put some big hits on Herschel early in the game, perhaps they can they can psychologically take him out of this game. Third and four. They feel he's one of those players where if you bloody him early, it sort of sort of takes away his resolve as the day goes on. So Look for them to be trying to hit Herschel pretty hard in the first quarter. We'll call that the early game big hit theory. The early game big hit theory of Herschel Walker. Third and three for Philadelphia. Ball at the 47. Flag on the play again. Cunningham with the free play going downtown. Looking for Williams. Incomplete. Defending on the play was Roland Mitchell, but there is a flag on the play. You know, Randall, being the veteran he is, he saw the defensive lineman jump off sides. He knew he had a free place. We went downtown. Just take a look at uh, Randall Cunningham. The first person he ran to on the sidelines to chat with that time was Jim McMahon. And uh, again, many people talk about the kind of relationship, whether or not it's a feigned one on a part of Randall. But Randall really does have respect for McMahon's intelligence and experience. Absolutely. He recognizes that Jim McMahon has been there. He's been to the Super Bowl. He wears a ring. He's a good veteran quarterback. And Randall could use some leadership right about now. He recognizes Jim as one of those people that can give it to him. And with the penalty, it's first and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at the 48 of Green Bay on the ground again. Walker, big hole. First down run by Herschel Walker. Finally stopped by Chuck Cecil. And speaking of Chuck Cecil, Cecil was the one talking about the big hit theory early on as far as Herschel Walker maybe being able to intimidate him, but not on that play. Well, Chuck Cecil is the guy that put a couple big hits on Dave Meggett with the Giants last week. And uh, he's looking for Herschel. I'm not sure he wants to meet Herschel one on one. <laughs> Herschel getting the head of steam coming right up the middle like that. He needs a couple guys hanging on Herschel. And then he comes up and puts a lick on him. A little help indeed. Just underway here, first quarter. Action 11 49 and counting, no score. Opening drive for Philadelphia. First and 10, ball at the 38 of the Packers. Maurice Johnson in motion. Cunningham to pass again. Good time, lobbing one deep for Barnett. And Barnett had his fingers on it. Barnett looking back, thinking he was pushed before the ball got to him. Terrell Buckley was defending. Nice looking touch pass by Cunningham, and it looked like it was a good one. The pass was finally delivered. What's interesting in addition to that was the slight roll to the right. Randall Cunningham taking advantage of his mobility. We talked, was Richie Kotite going to take advantage of Randall's mobility, giving him some rolls, some bootlegs, little roll to the right, took him away from the pocket. Nicely delivered pass, just not quite short enough. Slightly overthrown. Boy, and that was a close one indeed. Buckley timing it. 
front end wanted the push, didn't get it. Second and ten. Byers in motion. And again, we've got some line movement, early line movement. Antone Davis that time. Before the snap, 78 all stars. Five yards, it's still second down. And George, we talk about the continuing education of Antone Davis, the second year player. And uh, again, a lot on his mind. You've seen enough tape of him. Uh, give me your synopsis of it. Well, he's a little nervous. Last week, he also jumped off sides against the Raiders early in the first quarter like this. I, I think as a young fellow who's been struggling this year, a lot of pressure on him. He tends to, to make mistakes in the first quarter. Then he settles down and plays better as the game goes on. Second and 15. And a timeout is called on the field. Philadelphia whistles for a timeout, leaving two for Co-Tight and Eagles. No score, first quarter action. squared. Hey, look! It's the Grand Canyon! It'll change the way you feel about everything you see from Sony. Colts. Buccaneers. Lions. Cowboys. Seahawks. the teams chose the inspiration for their names, they chose GTE, the telecommunications consultant to the NFL. Imagine what GTE could do for you. Astral GTX is the only leading motor oil that meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown in every grade. This is the only way to get that kind of performance from any other leading brand. Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. Back here in Milwaukee, no score between the Eagles and the Packers. 11-34 left in the first quarter play. George, there is a guy right there, George Koontz, who literally hustled his way onto the roster for the Packers. Absolutely. He was in. He was an inside linebacker at first, but he had so much speed and was so effective on special teams that Ray Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, said, we got to get this guy on the field in cover situations. He's also the linebacker that will be the spy versus Randall Cunningham in long yard situations. He'll be tracking Cunningham, keeping him from running. Second and 15 from the 43. Cunningham to pass. Intended receiver was Byers and Buckley feeling he had a bead on it. Could have come up with the pick. And Terrell Buckley, a very, very we can't say bashful. I mean, this guy really believes in himself, and that's probably putting it diplomatically. He believes that he is the best thing to come into the NFL in many years. <laughs> What's amazing is his size. He, this guy is tiny. Before the game, I was standing next to him. He, he must. He, he's, he's listed at five foot nine. I think he's closer to five seven. <laughs> they say he's 179. I think he's closer to 160. But he's got a lot of heart. He's looking for a big play. He has yet to make one this year. He plays very big. Third and. Fifth for the Eagles. Cunningham waits patiently, drills it incomplete. And he threw it in the direction of Calvin Williams. They only had, you know, Green Bay only had a three-man rush that time. It looked like Randall was feeling the pressure. And what's, what's interesting is that they got it with just three men. Randall could have run that time. I think he's feeling that he wants to stay in the huddle, not be a runner. That was one time I think he perhaps could have run. Jeff Fiegels punting for the Eagles. And Terrell Buckley fair catches it at the 15. So the Packers will take over after that 27-yard punt by Fiegels, first and 10 when we come back. Let's take a look at Brett Favre, the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, second-year quarterback out of southern Mississippi, getting set for the opening drive for the Packers. who are starting deep in their own territory at the 15. There's Sterling Sharp, a young man who is a major part of this offense. Jackie Harris in motion. Favre on the handoff. And on 
the ground running hard. The Packers go ahead for about three yards. Vince Workman, workmanlike, and speaking of workmanlike, Sterling Sharp, a guy who probably accounts for about 70% of the Packers' offense. And in talking with the Eagles, they recognize that he is the man that they've got to start. As you take a look at a big offensive line, Tootie Robbins, the anchor on the right tackle spot, a big guy who moves well. Workman, Sidney, Sanjay Beach, and Sterling Sharp. Two tight end formation. Barr throws it complete to Jackie Harris, and Jackie Harris ahead for the first down across the third. You know, this Packers coaching staff effusive in its praise of this guy, Jackie Harris. They say a star waiting to happen. Well, Jackie Harris is, as you said, JB, according to them, a star waiting to happen. It's important that the tight end do well in their system because, as Coach Mike Holgerman says, and that's Jackie Harris in the middle of your screen making the catch. He's a tight end that likes to go downfield. He's got soft hands. He can run well after the ball. But more importantly, the tight end has got to do well in this system because he's a primary receiver. Sides. Now we'll have to see whether or not Jackie Harris actually moved and drew the Eagles off. For the snap, will start number 80. Five yards is still first down. And in fact, reason to be a little nervous going against this Eagles defense, which is certainly one of the most feared in the NFL. Clyde Simmons, he may look like a choir boy, but he leads the NFL with 11 quarterback sacks. And talk about an impressive defensive line. Absolutely. Of course, the Minister of Defense, Reggie White, waiting to break loose. Byron Evans having a Pro Bowl type of year. Secondary, a little weak, but Eric Allen considered to be the best by Richie Kotite in the league. First and 15. Sterling Sharp, who now has caught the pass in 65 consecutive games as he continues to extend his Packer record with consecutive games. And Sharp, one of the strongest wide receivers. I mean, guys don't try to play him bump and run, George. Well, what the Eagles are going to try to do, they're going to double cover him all day long, what they call bracketing on defense, a guy inside and outside or, or upside and underneath. The, the problem with doing that to Sterling Sharp is he's physically so strong that he will knock a bump and one receiver, a defender, out of the way. Second and four. And at the 40. Workman. And Vince Workman ahead for, we'll call it three. Should bring up a third and one situation. They get a favorable spot. They call it a first down. So the Packers, with the running game, pick up the first down. Interesting, listening to uh, Mike Holmgren, he says, we were asking him about uh, uh, Vince Workman. I mean, the guy has really improved statistically in a number of categories, but yet they say he doesn't possess an awful lot of talent but gets the most out of it. Well, Vinny Workman is not the kind of, of player that's flashy. He's not a big speed guy, but he's he's a guy that comes to work every day and gets the job done. If you block for five yards, he'll get five yards and hold on to the ball. Doesn't fumble or turn it over. Eight, ten and counting left in the first quarter played. No score. Opening drive for the Packers. Bar pumps and throws it complete. And it looks to be recovered by the Eagles. Seth Jordan looked to have been the one to knock it loose, and Rich Miano came up with the uh, the fumble recovery. Second fumble recovery of the season for Miano. This is the kind of thing that gives Coach Mike Holgram nightmares. As it stands now, the Green Bay Packers lead the NFL in fumbles with 30. It's now obviously 31. No matter how good you play, you've got to hold on to the football. Seven fifty-nine left in the first quarter play. Jackie Harris, the outstanding tight end for Green Bay with that fumble. And Green Bay, as George Stark mentioned, leads the NFL in fumbles. 31 fumbles on the season now. And they've lost 15 as we take a look Walker. at Herschel Walker. With a gain of about five, it looks like, by Herschel Walker. Well, Herschel now has gotten off to a a bit of a decent start now not having been hit hard and again we were talking about chuck cecil saying he played against herschel when he was with uh, minnesota and they smashed him that first game that first play the first time they uh, played against him and he was no good the rest of the game 
That's what he said, and, but I think it's too late for that now. Herschel has got some runs under his belt, and as the game goes forward now, the longer he runs, the better he'll probably get. On second and five, Cunningham running and throwing too hard, incomplete. Intended receiver was Byers. Bounced off of him. It was a drilled pass, and the pressure that time applied by Matt Brock. And right now, let's swing you back to New York for an update with Greg Gumbel. All right, JB, at Kansas City, Christian Okoye gets the Chiefs on the board first from two yards out, and with the extra point, Kansas City leading Washington 7-0 in the first, James. All right, Greg, and talking about big running backs, I mean, Christian Okoye, virtually impossible to stop a guy about 260, 265 that close to the goal line. You need at least three or four guys hanging on and hope he just gets, and hope he just gets tired of carrying you downfield. Third and five, Cunningham out of the shotgun. Cunningham only one of seven thus far. To make it one of six thus far as Cunningham throws to the intended receiver by Sikahima. Notice Cunningham was rolling to the right on that play. As we spoke earlier, we talked to Cunningham, and he said he hoped that Richie Kotite would put some plays in to take advantage of his natural rolling and running ability. That was a roll to the right. Nobody's out there. Nice delivery of the football, but it relaxes him to be on the move when he's passing the ball. And that completion of Sikahima makes it first and 10 from the 41 of the Packers for the Eagles. And number 41, Byers, carrying the ball. Good second and third effort by Keith Byers. A hard fought three yards and a little discussion down on the field, if you will. I'll tell you, hats off to Keith Byers just to be playing in the game. You mentioned before he's playing with that broken pinky on his right hand, and he's wearing that glove and protective uh, padding on the inside. That's a soft cast, and... and uh, He's a tough, he's a tough football player anyway. So the difficulty of, of playing with the soft cast is one thing, but also you have to hold on to the football. He's a running back, so he's got to be extra conscious of not fumbling that ball when he's carrying it with that soft cast on the football. Second and six, Byers at the H-back spot. 545. And I think the play clock expired before the play. Before the snap, the 25 second clock ran out. Delay of game, five yards, it's still second down. Let's take a look at Kotite again. He is so hopeful of success for Randall in this game. And Randall, as I correct myself on the stats, he is two of six. So not a great start by Randall Cunningham. Well, he doesn't look exactly comfortable to me yet. The Eagles want to get some points on the board, keep the ball, and at the same time have Randall relax. On second and 11, intended receiver was Keith Byers and George Coos that time with good coverage. Showing some of the speed and hustle that Mike Holmgren was talking about as far as Coops. Well, the, the Eagles are lucky that this is not this is not seven going against them. Byers was in a little swing pass. George Coots is covering him man to man. Coots is out there early. That's Coots right in the middle of your screen coming up underneath. Had that ball been delivered where it should have been a little bit lower, Kuntz might have had that interception and it would have been seven going the other way. So the Eagles faced with a third and 11. Ball at the 42. Four wide receivers in. Trips right formation. This is Roy Green in motion. Cunningham takes off. And that's the old Randall Cunningham running for the first down. That's what he said at the top of the show, that he wanted to do more, felt more comfortable doing that. He displayed at that time. Vinny Clock finally with the tackle. But when Cunningham ran, dropped back that time, JB, it looked, he didn't even look downfield to deliver the ball. I don't think he's comfortable passing right now. He dropped back, pulled that down. He knew he was going to run that all the way, even though it was a called pass and not a called quarterback draw. I believe he's just not comfortable throwing the ball right now, much more comfortable running the ball. 18-yard gain down to the 23, first and 10. 435 and counting left in the first quarter. No score. Walker, looking for a hole. None to be found. No gain on the play. Brian Noble, along with Holland, on the 
tackle. Herschel kind of turned that corner, looked upfield, said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Tried to go back inside. Tough for a big fella, Herschel's side. You know, he runs with those short little steps anyway. And when he's not going to turn that corner, he's not really good at totally reversing field like that. No way to go on that play. Second and 11 on number 24. Second and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at the 24. Walker the lone back. Cunningham throws it complete to Beach. And that is the first catch for Pat Beach since October the 18th. That was his last catch. And again, there's been an awful lot of talk in Philadelphia about non-utilization of the tight ends. And Richie Kotite says, hey, those plays are there. Well, of course, ever since the loss of Keith Jackson, Randall really hasn't been comfortable with the tight end position, and they need tight ends to catch the ball in this offense. Keith Jackson was a full 50% of their receptions. So they've got to work Pat Beach and Maurice Johnson in. Glad to see Randall going to him. Third and three. The Eagles need to get to the nine. I'll make that the 14-4 first down. And no gain on the play that time. Leading the charge. Tell, tell, tell us Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett is called the elephant in their defensive terminology, which I think is kind of interesting. Most other defense will call him the stub linebacker, which is a strong side. That's not Tony Bennett we're looking at. Tony Bennett is number 90, but anyway, he's the elephant, which is to say the strong side linebacker in that defensive scheme. This is a 34-yard field goal attempt, and it is good. So Roger Ruzic drilling it through. He's four of five from that range, and the Eagles on the scoreboard first. The Packers home away from home, Milwaukee County Stadium. Eagles on top three, nothing as we take a look at Jackie Harris, who I guess you could say uh, had his first fumble of the year. He Look, did have his, up for it. He had his first fumble of the year. He he made a big play. Then he jumped off sides. Then he had a fumble. He could be, I believe, it's going to be one of the major keys for Green Bay today if they accept, if they expect to win. Jackie Harris has got to stay in this game. And that was a short kick, and Corey Harris is going to get the Packers excellent field position as he runs out of bounds at about the 32. Roger Ruzik forcing him out as we take a look at Kansas City leading Washington 7-0 in the contest. We heard Greg Gumbel with the update. So the Packers will start with excellent field position. Ball is marked at the 32. 210 left in the first quarter. Eagles on top by a field goal. Going back to Jackie Harris, JB. Sterling Sharp is going to get his catches. Workman is a good back. And he'll get a lot of catches. Jackie Harris is a downfield tight end, which is needed to stretch that defensive envelope to open up the crossing patterns underneath for Sterling Sharp and Sanjay Beach. First and 10 from the eye. And Brett Farr with the play action. Throws it complete to Harry Sidney, and Harry Sidney takes it across the 40. And looks to be more than enough for the first down as Harry Sidney bringing some veteran experience to the Packers. And it looks like Favre is holding that left shoulder of his. And that tends to happen whenever you play the mean defense of Philadelphia. Well, he got crunched that time. The Eagles are going to try to put a lot of hits on him. That's the Minister of Defense, of course, Reggie White coming in on top. That's 305 pounds landing on top of you. What they want to do with a young quarterback is shake him up early, take him out of his game, like they did to Marinovich last week with the Raiders. And he is playing hurt. You can see he's still favoring that left shoulder. First and 10. On the ground. And Workman with a nice run. First down and a lot more. One man to beat. Big hook. We're going to run it. Big hole, big run. Vince Workman. They said he wasn't the right back for this offense. They said he's not flashy, no moves, just gets the job done day in, day out. 
out week in, week out. Nice play by Vince Workman. That's the way you take the pressure off a young quarterback. Big run by a veteran running back. First and 10, ball at the 13 of the Eagles. 25 seconds and counting left in the first quarter. Workman again, and Workman driving hard as he runs right into Byron Evans. Take a look at Philly's defense. Has allowed eight plays of 40 plus yards, and the Eagles will say that when you play an aggressive, risky defense, you are subject to the big plays. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Philadelphia three, Green Bay nothing. We'll be back in the second quarter after this. You got it coming out. I don't know if it can be seen. There's, there's a, the infield was sodded because this is a baseball. They play baseball here also. And the infield line is about two or three inches higher than where the outfield is. Hopefully one of the backs or receivers won't trip on that line. Two tight end formation. On second down for the Packers. Far throws it complete to Harris. And Harris is drilled about two yards shy of what was necessary for the first down should bring up a third and two. Ball marked at the five. And Byron Evans finally with the stop. And Harris, you know, we, we saw the shot of him on the sidelines when he created his first fumble. Ball on the five. Guilty of his first fumble of the season. And he didn't look to be awfully bothered. Maybe he knew he was going to come back and try to make amends. Well, in this business, no one's going to be right all the time. You're going to make mistakes. you got to shake them off. It's early in the game. You can't let it affect you and ruin your whole day. Your team needs you. He came back. Sterling Sharp, JB, you know that one of his goals this year, you and I spent some time talking to him, is to break Art Monk's single season reception record. There's no flag on the play. Touchdown. So the touchdown stands as Sharp comes up with his seventh receiving touchdown of the season. It's a little bitty roll out to the right. Sterling Sharp just releases into the flat. Jackie Harris up top had run off the defense. A little bit of open pass underneath, nicely executed. What's interesting about that is the Eagles, one of the Eagles' goals going into this game was to double Jackie Sterling Sharp, try to take him out of the Green Bay offense. Has not worked seven points. He's one step closer to Art Monk's single season re reception record of 104. And Jackie boots it through, so the Packers Go on top and lead the Eagles on that Sterling Sharp touchdown run. In the battle of the quarterbacks, Brett Favre is winning that battle statistically right now. Vince Workman, that was the key play. Strong run by Workman. Sterling Sharp comes up with the receiving touchdown. And the turnover did not hurt Green Bay. Green Bay on top by the score of 7-3. to three. Sikahima. And by Sikahima with an excellent return. Boy, this guy is still dangerous. And George Kuntz comes up with the tackle. It's doubleheader day on CBS, highlighted by New Orleans visiting San Francisco. Jim Mora has the Saints ready to rumble. And with the Dome Patrol's leader, Ken Swilling, leading an awesome, awesome and ferocious defense. Now Steve Young has more than stepped in for Joe Montana, and the 49ers are again considered to be the head of the class on both sides of the ball. And of course, we all know who that man is, Jerry Rice. This game will give the winner a leg up in the NFC West. That's coming up. On the ground, Byers running hard for the Eagles. And Byers picks up four. We'll bring up a second and six. Matt Brock on the stop. Ball ball. 
boy, Kansas City out in front of Washington by 14 nothing. Well, you know, that Kansas City team, you don't know which personality is going to come forth. They started off so great, then they went even at 4-4, four and four, but they're looking, licking their chops against Washington. Well, they've got that big, big, powerful back running game, and the Washington Redskins have had some difficulty in stopping the run this year, so Kansas City might have the perfect offense to really defeat that Redskin defense. Second and six for the Eagles. Second quarter action, play action, Cunningham bootlegging. Throws it softly, incomplete intended receiver was Byers. And those kinds of plays, exactly what Coatsite said he wanted to put in for Randall. That was George Kuntz we saw on camera, number 53, whose job is to mirror Randall Cunningham. Randall rolled to the left. George Kuntz is right there. He's the fast cover guy and also the spy on Randall. Randall seems to be playing without a lot of fire and confidence right now. He was out there, could have run the ball, kind of had that short little pass. He needs to get pumped up and get his team pumped up. Third and six, Eagles two of four on third down conversions. Out of the shotgun. Cunningham, good time, drills it complete. And that is enough for the first down as Cunningham throws a seven-yard pass to Williams. That was Chuck Cecil, JB, who came up with the big hit. You know, the, the Green Bay plays the kind of defense, especially with Chuck Cecil deep in the middle, where they like you to catch that little pass over the, over the middle and come up and punish those receivers, put them in the frame of mind where in the fourth quarter they may not want to make that catch. First down, Herschel Walker, and Walker looks to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by everybody. <laughs> Take your choice, huh? Rich Cotite was saying, in playing this Green Bay team, and you look at them on film, they swarm to the ball. Gang tackling, swarming, emotional defensive team. That play, you know, exemplifies what I'm talking about. Herschel tackled by the defense. <laughs> and based on the spot, it's a one-yard game, making it second and nine. 11.55 in county. Left in the first half of play. Eagles trailing 7-3. A gain of two on the play. You know, we've called Chuck Cecil's name quite a bit so far, and his name was called quite a bit last week with some big hits. To take a look at Chuck Cecil last week against the Giants, and what a wicked hit applied to David Meggett. That was only one. Take a look at this one. This one was even stronger. Wow! And it was the very next play. The very next play. Two plays in a row against Dave Meggett. Third and seven. And Byers knocked out of bounds by Mitchell. And he's going to be about three yards shy of the first down marker. So the Eagles will have to punt it away. You know, when you looked at those hits by Chuck Cecil, it was interesting to hear Meggett's response was, I didn't even feel those hits. I mean, I get hit harder joking around with the guys in the locker room. Chuck Cecil remarked, well, if that's the case, I don't want to be traded to the Giants because the locker room play is too rough. Yeah, it must be a rough locker room. Fegels with the punt. Takes a Green Bay roll. Punt goes into the end zone. The Packers will take over first down on their own. Packers ball when we come back. Sellout crowd here at Milwaukee County Stadium, 56,000 strong, and Brett Favre playing impressively. Six of six, 57 yards, one touchdown. He's playing very well. Also, he took he took some hits. There's Randall, who it seems is not emotionally in this game, yet he needs a little bit of fire. A little Brett Favre fire would probably help him. Big country boy, plays tough. First and 10 for the Packers from their own 20. And the handoff to Darryl Thompson, and Thompson takes it across. The 25. Now, that was a play taken out of the page, if you will, to a page taken out of the playbook of the San Francisco 49ers. That's about as close as you're going to come to a Statue of Liberty play. That's that kind of wraparound draw, and uh, that's Coach Mike Holgram right there. 
That's an old Bill Walsh play. Quarterback drops back. The back looks like he's in pass protection. The ball kind of wraps around underneath him. That's Darrell Thompson, who they like to get in this game more. They feel that uh, he could be their back of the future, but he has a tendency to fumble on occasion, and nothing makes Coach Holgram madder than that. Second and four. And Thompson wrapped up in the backfield that time, so good pursuit by that Eagles defense, and it's an actual loss of three on the play. Andy Harmon on the tackle. Take a look at Mike Holmgren. We were talking about taking a page out of that San Francisco playbook. You look at some of the other disciples of Bill Walsh and how they are doing, and overall, very, very nice job. Dennis Green is doing well. Sam White started out well. We did one of his earlier games. Uh, they've been struggling down there in Tampa since then. There's Coach Mike Holmgren right there. Big fella, six foot five. Looks like a player himself. And he was a quarterback who handed off to O.J. Simpson at USC. Third and seven, far. Complete. This one to Sterling Sharp for the first down. Brett Favre is seven of seven. That a 16-yard pass play to Sterling Sharp. Finally stopped by John Booty. The way that Green Bay wanted to attack the Eagles today was put Sharp in motion, run across the back, and then have these long crossing patterns across the field. Philadelphia Eagles, they double you, but they pass you off from, from linebacker to linebacker, and they get confused, and it creates holes in the defense. That was a hole that created. Nice pass, nice reception. Sterling Sharp is the man. Ball at its own 39, first and 10. Favre, joining it complete for another first down. Brett Favre is on fire. That one to Jackie Harris, 8 of 8 for the young man from Kill, Mississippi. Rich Kotite said he was afraid of this quarterback. He felt that Brett Favre was going to be a star in the NFL. He's big, he's strong, he's like a linebacker at the quarterback position. He's got a force of will and drive and dedication that inspires the men around him. He's serving notice right now. Eight of eight, as I mentioned, for 85 yards. First and 10, ball at the 49 of the Eagles. 740 left in the second quarter play. The handoff. And that looks like maybe a loss of one yard. The handoff to Daryl Thompson tackled by Byron Evans and Mike Holmgren did indicate that he wanted to get Daryl Thompson a bit more activity today and thus far he's getting to play well Daryl Thompson of course was projected to be one of the great backs of this league he was drafted second behind Emmett Smith the great runner of the Dallas Cowboys he hasn't had a chance to really gel in the league and coach Holgram wants to give him an opportunity they feel he may be the back of the futures for the Green Bay Packers so Thompson out, Workman, and Sidney in. Far pumps, throws it complete to Workman. And Workman takes it to about the 46. It's Vince Workman. Take a look at the crossing patterns. We talked earlier about the crossing patterns. Crossing patterns that you're gonna see underneath the Eagle linebackers, they get confused. He goes to the right, they get confused, he gets the reception. Third and seven from the 46. Need to get to the 39 for the first down. And a slow draw again, Workman, first down. The second time that the Packers have run the slow draw, and it's worked a 12-yard run by Vince Workman. Right now, the, right now, the Green Bay Packers have the Philadelphia Eagles off balance. They're not sure whether to rush the passer or stay back and, and guard against the draw. They have got to get to the passer. Otherwise, they can give up the big play again pass. That's the wraparound draw. You drop back and you kind of hand that ball in from the backside. Philadelphia is not sure what quite what quite what to do, whether to stay in their rush lanes and get to far or try to stop the draw. First and ten, ball at the 35 of Philadelphia. Far drills it complete again. 
And this one to the rookie, Robert Brooks, out of South Carolina. A gain of four on the play will bring up a second and six. You know, George, and you were explaining, and I'm just wondering, why is it that the slow draw, if you will, is working so well? Workman, five carries for 64 yards, and this the first half of play. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles have got to get pressure on the quarterback. Their, their defensive backfield is not considered one of the best in the business. It tends to give up the big play, and they're trying to get to Favre and opening up lanes in the middle. Second and six. This is Harris in motion. Thompson, the ball carrier. Thompson with the first down. Daryl Thompson giving the Packers a good one-two punch at the running back spot, a nine-yard gain. And right now, you got to believe that Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, is scratching his head, clearly trying to figure out what's going on. In addition to him scratching his head, there's the emotional impact of the Green Bay Packers running the ball down the field on the Philadelphia Eagles. They hang their hat on the fact that no one can run the ball on them. If you run the ball on them, that means you can do anything you want to them because they step on the field and say, no one will run against us. First and 10. Ball at the 21. Bob to pass again. Complete again to Sidney. And Harry Sidney still on his feet. Down to about the one-yard line. Harry Sidney finally stopped by John Booty. A 20-yard gain on the play. That's Harry Sidney. What's with Mike Holgram in San Francisco? A steady workman-like back. Good receiver, good runner, has a Super Bowl ring. Knows this San Francisco offense. Nice pass over the middle. And a big back stays on his feet. Covers that football, looking for the goal line. And Favre has plenty of reason to be happy. 11 of 11, 114 yards passing in the first half. Two tight end formation. First and goal, ball at the one. And the handoff to Workman. And he'll be stopped. And as you took a look at Favre raising his arms on a celebration, George, he was grabbing that stomach area again, and again, he was hit awfully hard several plays back, and he's still feeling it. Hats off, great courage. I believe that Brett Favre was hurt that first hit we saw in the first quarter. He's holding his left arm. He took a hit, we saw the hit. And he took a shot there, not only in the left arm, but the ribs as he was grabbing. Second and goal. the ground. Touchdown Packers. Big block on that left side of the line. That's number 75, Ken Rutgers, and number 52, Frank Winters. They opened up the hole. Workman in a very workmanlike fashion. No one touches him going into the end zone. And Jackie puts the exclamation point on the second rushing touchdown of the season for a workman. Packers in front comfortably. Green Bay Packers continuing their emotional play from last week, an impressive performance against the Giants. As we take a look at Jim McMahon, might we see him? Randall Cunningham, only 5 of 11 for 32 yards. He's only 5 of 11 for 32 yards, but in addition to that, he doesn't seem to have fired up this offense. Philadelphia needs a spark of some sort. Sikahima tried to provide it as he takes it up just across the 20, tackled by Corey Harris. Eagles ball when we come back. Fourteen three, Green Bay on top. As you take a look at Kotite and wonder what is he thinking? I think Richie Kotite right now is trying to determine whether he's going to stay with Randall Cunningham or go to Jim McMahon. This is the upcoming schedule: Giants, 49ers, Minnesota, Seattle, and Washington. They cannot afford to lose today. This is the easiest game of the next six games. Randall's not doing well. The offense is not doing well. I think he's thinking, do I have to go to Jim McMahon to get some spark in this Eagles offense? The only breather in that schedule, of course, against Seattle. First and ten, Cunningham. Throws 
throws it complete to Vai Sikahima as we approach the two-minute warning of the first half. And the Eagles with a little time to think. 14-3, Green Bay on top. Two minutes left in the first half. Philadelphia ball, second and three. As you take a look at Cunningham, and George, you've been remarking, he doesn't look to have any spark. I mean, what specifically? Well, he, it's an air of confidence about you. And on a lot of teams, believe me, not all teams, by the way, but on these two teams, the quarterback is the spark, and, and Randall's the guy that's got to make you believe he can make it happen. You know, it's, it's kind of, he's not making me feel all that confident up here, so I don't believe he's making those guys feel that confident on the field. McMahon did last week, sparking a lifeless offense to victory over the Raiders, 31-10. Draw to Herschel Walker, and Herschel Walker with the first down run. Uh -oh. Ten yards gained on the play by Herschel Walker, tackled by Adrian White. First and ten, ball at the 38. Cunningham out of the shotgun with time. Throws it complete. To the 45 goes Sekahima. A gain of six on the play will bring up a second and four. 125 and counting left in the first half of play. Randall looking, being patient, and throws it away. Good coverage by the Packers that time. Randall with no options nor any lanes to run in. In addition, the Green Bay Packers are getting pretty good pressure with only three guys rushing. They've got three guys rushing. The Eagles have five guys blocking, so they shouldn't be able to get anywhere near the quarterback. And they've got, of course, the one guy, George Coons, spying in case Randall were to run. So good defensive coverage by the DBs of Green Bay. From the 45, 114 left in the first half. Eagles trailing 14-3. Complete to Barnett, and Barnett has the first down and is out of bounds. 109 left in the first half. Eagles and Packer territory. The Eagles have plenty of time. They're they're on the 48-yard line. A little bit of running, a little bit of passing here. They can use this clock up and put some points on the board. Roy Green to the near side. Cunningham out of the shotgun. First and ten. Good protection going for the home run ball. Incomplete. Good coverage by the Packers. Chuck Cecil back there along with Vinnie Clark. Intended receiver was Fred Barnett. And don't forget, coming up on the NFL Today Halftime Report, Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from all of today's NFL action. That'll be coming your way from our New York studio at halftime. And Greg will certainly talk about what the Kansas City Chiefs are doing to the Washington Redskins as Washington continues to struggle. That and more coming up at halftime. Second and 10, ball spotted at the 47. does not a gain of six on a play we've got an injury on the field JB a down Packer and we'll give you an update on the injury after this Cunningham again trying to get a little encouragement from the sidelines as he's talking with Rich Kotite. As we take a look at a down Green Bay Packer, we still don't know who it is as of yet, but he's being tended to. And Mike Holmgren and George again. I mentioned before how the Packers have been playing a lot more impressively than the three and six record really started to show some dividends last week against the Giants. You mentioned before the top of the show that really was an emotional boost for the entire team. It is an emotional boost for the team and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they've got a new defensive system. You know, they used to 
that was Matt Brock, of course, getting up. He he had a bad neck. He's been playing with a brace. I don't know if his injury has to do with his neck or his back, but he, he has been playing with a, a, a collar because he's, he's, he has had neck injuries this year. But to get back to what I was saying is that Green Bay went from a two-gap reading defense to an aggressive slashing attacking defense, and it's taken them a certain amount of time to become comfortable with it, and they are now. Third and four. For the Eagles, Don Davey has come in to replace Matt Brock. As George Stark mentioned, had a neck burner from last week's game. Cunningham, nowhere to go. Swarm. Don Davey, who just came into the game, led the charge along with Tony Bennett, Johnny Holland, and company. That's Tony Bennett, who got three and a half sacks last week against the Giants, led that charge. He, he appeared to come right up the middle. There he is, Tony Bennett coming into your screen, chasing Randall Cunningham to the right. He'll get at least half of that sack. He should have gotten the whole thing, because he's the one that flushed it. Second sack of the afternoon for the Packers. Fiegels. And an excellent job by the Eagles. Ball down inside the 10. 16 seconds left. A 38-yard punt by Fiegels. And the Packers will start at their own nine. We had a discussion with Randall Cunningham last night asking him whether or not there would be any kind of, I guess, queasy feeling coming to play against a team that last year took him out for the entire season, specifically Bryce Pop, who hit him on that play opening game last season. And Cunningham began the long road to recovery and Richie Kotite says he has come a long way since the injury, but Cunningham has been struggling here in the first half, and the Eagles go into the locker room trailing the Green Bay Packers by 11. Brett Favre, a sensational first half for Brett Favre, despite the injury to his rib. That's the end of the first half with the score. Green Bay 14, Philadelphia 3. Back here in Milwaukee as we get set for the second half, Randall Cunningham, 9 of 17 for 59 yards, and George Stark has mentioned not a very inspiring first half. As you take a look at Don Mikowski, who has taken his jacket off and has been warming up, we have not been able to get a definitive report from Green Bay about the condition of Brett Favre, but it didn't take a mental giant to see that he was hurt in the first half. We suspect ribs, and Don Mikowski is warming up as a result. You have Don, you know, Don Mikowski, as, you, as we see on camera, is warming up. Quarterbacks, of course, like to stay, you know, especially when you've got the lead. There's Brett Favre right there. I think if he, unless he was shot dead, he's going to play this second half. He's playing the Philadelphia Eagles. He's got the lead. He's 11 for 11. And I don't think uh, wild horses could drag him off this football field. Somehow the hurts don't hurt quite as much when you got the lead and you're 11 for 11. And George, let me ask you very candidly then, at what point do you think Richie Kotite would make a decision to pull Randall Cunningham out? He told you at the top of the show that he'll do anything to win, whatever that took. I think that Richie Kotite will give Randall one series, at the most two, but probably just one series. He can't afford to fall too far behind. He may need a whole half to catch to get back in this ball game and have his defense hold Green Bay. I don't think he's gonna give Randall a lot of time. Edgar Bennett started from his own six, and Edgar Bennett with a strong run for the Packers as he takes it up to about the 37-yard line. Finally tackled and pushed out of bounds by William Thomas. Excellent return by Bennett, the rookie out of Florida State. And you take a look at Brett Favre, as you mentioned, George Stark. It would take a wild herd of horses. <laughs> to take him out of this game. Absolutely. You're winning. You're beating the Eagles. You're staying. To take a look at the numbers, all in favor of Green Bay, and that's why the score is 14-3. to First and 10 for the Packers. Ball at the 38. 
on the ground, Daryl Thompson. And a flag on the play as Thompson runs into a wall of Eagles. A gain of only one by Daryl Thompson. And it looks like, from what we're hearing from down on the field, that Daryl Thompson will get most of the work the rest of the way as Vince Workman is out of the game with a shoulder injury. And that certainly hurts because Workman, a very strong first half, seven carries for 65 yards and one touchdown. So Daryl Thompson, who had a quad problem two weeks into the competition, re-injured it the week before the Detroit game and when it tightened up there to take a look at, at Workman now in civvies. in motion and Thompson trying to make something out of it with the spin move as he hurls ahead for about two William Thomas on the tackle that last play prior to this one Green Bay was in a two tight end one back offense and they ran a play near and dear to the Washington Redskins the counter gap penalty on the play but now they've come back and they're running the ball again they're thinking we've got the lead we're going to try to run the ball we've run it effectively in the first half time of possession field possession and ball control second and 18 ball mark at the 30 and the slow draw again and harry sydney runs it ahead we'll see where they spot the ball eight yard gain on the play and is it close enough for a measurement? And that's the third time that the Packers have gone to the slow draw. Well, Green Bay has been successful with that play. And I, the Eagles cannot say as a team that they've been surprised by it now. They've seen it three times. Every time it's gone for good yardage. They're going to have to stop the draw, among other things. Third and ten. should have been caught in and out of the hands of Kendrick Taylor and that was a first down pass dropped Brett Favre rolled out on this play his offensive line has bunched the whole Eagle defensive line together you can see them on the right of your screen he's out there all by himself delivers the pass nice throw Unfortunately, Kitchick Taylor couldn't hold on to the ball, but good pass blocking by his offensive line. They just bunched up the whole Eagle defense. Brian Wagner on for his first punt. Having replaced Paul McJulian, who was cut last week. Sikahima. And Sikahima with maybe about five, six yards on a return, a 44-yard punt, five-yard return. Decent hang time of 4.1. So Cunningham will go at it again, and we'll see, George, if in fact you think an inept first series might be reason enough to pull them, to pull them out. The numbers tell the story right there, and the Eagles have not had good starting field position but once. Sherman. Now we thought we might see Heath Sherman a lot more in the first half, but then again, there weren't many good opportunities to put him in, as Richie Kotite said, mostly in third down and short situations and goal line situations would he be in. Well, Heath Sherman has been described by Richie Kotite as, as running like a bowling ball. He runs low to the ground. He's going to be your short yardage running back, your goal line running back, your third and one, fourth and one running back, and they haven't been in those circumstances. Completes it to Maurice Johnson, and Maurice Johnson is tripped up and lands at about the 26. Brian Noble with a tackle. Brian Noble suffered a back injury three weeks ago, actually back contusions, and said there was no way he wasn't going to play today. 
We saw him in practice this week, and he was very, very stiff, and there was there was some concern about him playing today, but you're right. He said he had to play against the Philadelphia Eagles. Third and six from the 27. And it's complete. And for the first down, so Randall Cunningham finds Roy Green, the veteran of 14 years in the league, a gain of 10 on the play. With Green Bay playing this kind of defense, they're only rushing three guys. The Eagles have five offensive linemen. Those three guys should never, ever get near the quarterback. That being the case, Randall Cunningham should have plenty of time to deliver the ball downfield. Given enough time, you should always be able to find an open receiver. The Eagles should win this contest with, if Green Bay continues to play with just three guys rushing. 10-35 left in the third period of play. Eagles trailing 14-3. Cunningham and Brian Noble with the sack. Second sack of the season for Brian Noble. And that is number three of Cunningham today. You know, in the past, the pressure was always over Anton Davis, number 78. Not the case. Brian Noble came right up the middle. And it's a sack. The Eagles are not giving Randall Cunningham. Well, in that particular case, he didn't have time. In the past, he's had some time. But this offensive line should be able to block those guys. There aren't that many guys coming. Good defensive scheme by Green Bay to, to this point. Second and 20. Brown may be caught for all sides. Drop. Intended receiver was Pat Beach. But there was a flag on the play. We'll see what, what the call is. It appeared to be defense offside encroachment, which of course means that you have a free play on offense. Repeat second down. That gives you a free play on offense. It would have been nice had Pat Beach been able to hold on to that football. But he didn't. Eagles, of course, pick up five yards, but the downfield pass would have been superior. As Brian Noble, who we mentioned before, said he would not be kept out of this game despite the back contusion. And some three weeks ago, we take a look at the play against the Bears. And Brian Noble always in the thick of things. You see him right there, number 91, and take a look at that head being bent back. Back to live action. And again, Roy Green with the pass reception from Cunningham for the first down. Roy, Roy Green is. still showing he's got what it takes. And you know this guy all too well. Boy, did he cause the Redskins a lot of problems. Boy, Roy Green has been around a long time. Maybe 100 years. <laughs> if not 100, probably at least 50. <laughs> he was playing when I first started. And I, I played 13 and retired for seven. So Roy Green, he's a veteran, he's been there, he runs good routes, and, and he knows what it takes to win. Maybe he can get a little spark on offense from the Eagles. Crisp routes indeed. That was a 25-yard pass play, first and 10. Sherman, the ball carrier. And Sherman has nowhere to go. And with a loss of one on the play, Robert Brown, the veteran in there on the stop as well. You know, Robert Brown has been around a long time, and Ray Rhodes says that while he's not flashy, I mean, he certainly is durable. He never misses practice. He works out every day. He's got 101 consecutive games. He feels that no one can run the ball his side. He may not be the, the quickest upfield pass rusher, but he certainly is in the game to stuff the run. He did that time. 11th year veteran out of Virginia Tech. Second and 11. Noble was blitzing. Cunningham takes off. And Cunningham has the first down by yard. Knocked out of bounds, and there is a flag. Now that would create for some fisticuffs on the sidelines. George Cooks was a guy tackling him late that time. Here's Jerry Austin. At the end of the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 53. 15 yards, first down. And that's the guy you were mentioning, George, who has the responsibility of spying on Randall and a little too aggressive that time. You know, uh, sometimes football players 
can get a little rowdy and they get a little emotional and a fight could break out. What's especially scary about this stadium, of course, is it's the only stadium in the NFL where all both teams are on the same side of the field. So conceivably, if you have a bench clear clearing brawl, they don't have to go very far. They're only five feet from each other. <laughs> in the same neighborhood. First down. Somehow I think I might take the Philly players in that. First and ten. With the penalty ball marked at the 20 of Green Bay. And Walker running hard for about three. And George Stark, just to underscore your point, there's a shot of the sidelines here. This is, as you mentioned before, a baseball stadium, the home of the Milwaukee Brewers. Both sidelines, both yep. benches on the same sidelines. As a matter of fact, we also saw a shot of the Philadelphia benches. They're white versus the benches you see for Green Bay, those benches, heated benches brought in by Philadelphia. Those are heated benches, yeah. They shipped them from the East Coast. The Philly guys get to sit on nice warm benches. The Green Bay guys got the sort of, the sort of cold wood benches, which is working to their advantage today. Second and seven. Sherman, big hole. Touchdown, Eagles. Heath Sherman. Has he paid dividends? Second rushing touchdown of the season for Heath Sherman, a 17-yard scamper. Last week, he had a 30-yard scamper up the middle, very similar versus the Raiders. Could be the back that provides the spark that the Eagles needed today. They needed something to come out of that drive. They got it. Randall made a big play to the right. Heath Sherman up the middle, very reminiscent of his run last week versus the Raiders. Last week, Heath Sherman at his first rushing touchdown in nearly two years, and the point after is good. So Kotite certainly will keep that young man, Heath Sherman, into the game plan a lot more. Philadelphia back into it now, 14-10. Green Bay on top, and Heath Sherman, the youngest of five children and baby brother, capping off a nine-play, 77-yard drive with a 17-yard touchdown run. And Herschel Walker have not heard much from him since early. Well, Herschel started out good. He had a couple runs in the first quarter, but he's been awfully quiet since then. Keith Sherman, in talking with him, he said he's he runs low to the ground. He's short anyway, kind of hides in there underneath those legs of those big offensive linemen. And when he sees a hole, makes a break, that's what he did, touchdown. He said his running style is described almost as crawling he runs so low to the ground but a smart move stand behind those big blockers absolutely can't get hit that way from the four bennett and andrew bennett continues pumping those legs to pick up a couple of extra it'll be green bay ball with 708 left in a third when we come back County Stadium some 106 miles south of Green Bay 96 miles north of Chicago folks it's in cold territory and Brett Farm the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers from Kill Mississippi I recall him telling us during training camp he was so cold he had to wear three warm-up suits he hasn't seen the worst yet right now he's been warm out there on the field though superb play Far throws it complete to Jackie Harris, and Harris looks to have run for the first down. Indeed he has, and Jackie Harris making up for the fumble in the first half, and boy, he has really been playing well. And you know, we talked about whether or not the longtime veteran Ed West, ninth-year player out of Auburn, really found it difficult to accept that Harris has been elevated to a starter and playing so well. He says, no way, he's my biggest supporter. Well, Ed West has always been primarily a blocker, and he's been around a long time. He hasn't been on a championship team. He feels that Jackie Harris can be one of the key elements in making this Green Bay Packer team a playoff team, and I believe he's right. First and 10 from the 34. Far complete to Harris again, and there is a flag on the play. Jackie Harris gets it up about a half a yard shy of the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it and what the infraction is. Offensive pass interference, number 86, 10 yards, repeat, first down. And that is on the veteran tight end we were just talking about, Ed West. 
You know, speaking of all the passes that Jackie Harris has caught today and, and may still catch, Sterling Sharp was somewhat jealous about going about the Eagle game, knowing that the Eagles were going to double and triple Sterling Sharp. He said, Jackie may get 30 passes today. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's absolutely right. The tight end, first of all, is a primary receiver in Mike Holgram's pass offense, but also the Eagles try to take away your best weapon. They feel it, Sterling Sharp. That opens up Jackie Harris to catch a lot of balls today. First and 20. Ball pushed back to the 24, and Brett Favre seen something he doesn't like calls for a timeout as he trots over to talk it over with Mike Holmgren. First term out, timeout, that is, for the Packers, leaving them with two. Philadelphia has three. Only a four-point difference in the ball game here. Green Bay on top, 14-10 over Philadelphia. And the Philadelphia Eagles know that Sterling Sharp, as they said, coming into the game, 70% of the Packer offense and you can see if he averages seven catches a game, he will surpass Art Monk's single season reception record of 106. He would have 108. Far pumping. Throws it complete to Jackie Harris. And Jackie Harris hauls it in down at about the 39. 16 regained on a play. The Packers need to get to about the 44 for a first down. Six catches, 73 yards on the afternoon for Jackie Harris. And you take a look at his numbers coming into the game, and you can see that he's among the league leaders. Very, very productive indeed. Well, they had to have a big day today from Jackie Harris, and he certainly is answering that call. Fred Favre delivering the ball very well, stepped up. And that sharp that you saw on that list wasn't Sterling Sharp, but Shannon Sharp, his brother. <laughs> to Harry Sidney who dropped it. Came a little quicker than Sidney was expecting. Seth Joyner right there on the coverage. Once again, Brett Favre got the ball there. I think you're right, JB, that, that the ball came so quickly that Harry Sidney simply misjudged it and started to run prior to catching the ball. That's Tootie Roberts pushing the big guy out of the play. Up to me. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I know we're both smiling. As we look at Tootie Robbins, Tootie Robbins, who indeed is a large individual and carries a pretty big uh, set of grocery bags. Well, Tootie Robinson versus Reggie White, he got about 800 pounds of beef, right? <laughs> Third and four. Far complete to Thompson. And Thompson looks with that second effort to have gotten the first down. William Thomas on the tackle. Good second effort. And George, a graphic illustration of the emotion you're saying that had been lacking, at least prior to that touchdown drive of the Eagles. Well, on second effort, you know, Brett Favre, I believe, is hurt. It looks like he's holding his ribs. When you're playing with a guy that's hurt, how can you not play harder? You know, you see him struggling. He's holding his ribs. He's holding his arms. He's delivering the ball. It makes you play harder. You've got to play up to the standard that he's created, and that's what's happening in the Green Bay offense. 4.30 left in the third quarter play. Packers on top, 14-10. First and 10, ball at its own 45. Thompson. And running hard across midfield, six yard run by Daryl Thompson as he comes up limping just a bit. And keep in mind, Vince Workman, who has seven carries for 65 yards in the first half, is out with a shoulder injury. Daryl Thompson carrying the workload right now in the second half. There's Vince Workman in the warm up outfit. And boy, was he running hard. You see him in that sling there, the shoulder injury. Mike Holgram is running that classic Bill Walsh offense now, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. A lot of five-yard plays, six-yard plays. Use the clock, hold on to the ball. Second and four. Packers looking to get to the 45 for the first down. This is Thompson, and Thompson looks to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard loss. We'll see where they spot it. Mike Golick, seventh-year player out of Notre Dame, on the stop. And, George, I know you love the line play. We've been talking about Tui Robbins, and he's got a nice battle going with another superb guy, Reggie White. Well, they're running this ball to the right. That's Tui Robbins in the middle of your screen, blocking on Reggie White. You got about 305 pounds, blocking 325 pounds. A tough one yard. Now, Tootie had that hand on the back side of that number there, and that's a little too big a hand to hide. That's okay. That, that's all right. No problem with that. Oh, only because it wasn't called. Huh? No flag. No flag. <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't do it. Elbow flag on you, you didn't do it. Third and five. Thompson slipping to the left. First down run by Darrell Thompson and more. Darrell Thompson inside the 20 of Philadelphia. Another big play. That's what Green Bay was trying to do to the Eagles and what the Eagles said. They could not give up. They could not give up the big play. We've already seen a couple. We've seen another. This is a misdirection play. See, Green Bay, it looks like they're going to run to the right. They don't. It's a sweep to the left. A one-man, one-blocker sweep. Gets around that corner. And Darrell Thompson is off to the races. A lot of credit to Andy Harmon at nearly 270 pounds on the stop that time. A 33-yard run by Darrell Thompson. Ball at the 17, first and 10. A bootleg by far. Pump. Intercepted by William Thomas. So Brett Favre throws his seventh interception of the season. William Thomas coming up with his first pick of the season. That's a big play for the Eagles. They needed to do something to stop that drive. This is a situation where you're just throwing a ball to a guy that's not open. He tried to force it in there. I think that what that play had Brett Favre not been hurt, he could have run that ball that time. There was room to get downfield. William Thomas coming up with his first career interception. And the Eagles started first and ten. And the handoff on the ground. And their version of the slow draw is Heath Sherman was called into service, but only a two-yard gain. And again, the last interception that Bud Carson certainly had to be pleased with, picked off by William Thomas. On that last play, this is the tight end that Brett wants to get coming across the field. He's trying to get a long crossing route because those linebackers tend to get confused. He never got open. William Thomas stepped in front of the pass, made the interception. Back to live action, second and eight. Randall Cunningham dangerously close to the end zone. Going up top, looking for Williams. And a superb play again by Terrell Buckley. The little fellow playing a lot bigger than he is. Terrell Buckley may not be the biggest guy in the world. He may have difficulty stopping the run. They say he's not that physical towards those pulling guards that come out. But one thing he does have is speed and leaping ability. Randall's got plenty of time. He rolls out to the right, delivers a beautiful pass, probably 50 yards downfield. But Terrell Buckley, the one thing we know he does have is speed and athletic ability. He displays it right there. He said he had his best week of practice last week. Mike Holmberg saying that third and eight. Eagles five of nine on third down conversions. Complete to Walker. Well shy of the first down. Nice stand and nice tackle by Johnny Holland. It's enthusiastic here, and I'm sure in Kansas City, as Greg Gumbel will tell us. All right, JB, at Arrowhead Stadium, a fake punt kept the Redskins' drive alive, and then Ricky Urban's turned the corner from five yards out, and Washington is on the board. 28-7 Kansas City in the third, JB. All right, Greg, and Ricky Urban's was certainly looking to break out of a bit of a slump. That might be a minor breakout for him. Terrell Buckley pushed back to the 38, looking for some room. And Terrell Buckley, the second leading punt returner in the NFC with the four-yard return of that 47-yard punt. Packers on top of the Eagles, 14-10. Third quarter action, 21 seconds left as we take a look at Mike Holmgren, who saw his squad last week play the Giants, as you mentioned, George Stark, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Trailing 13 to 7 late into the game. The game was actually a lot closer than that 27 to 7 final score in favor of the Giants. It was 13 7, and then Brett Favre, who prior to that had the lowest interception average, I think, in the NFL. I'm sure he had the lowest. He threw three interceptions. The Giants turned him into scores, and it ended up being a blowout. They have to maintain this level of intensity through the fourth quarter. On first down, Favre throws it complete. 
it's caught. What a nifty grab by Jackie Harris, pulling in a real tough one as he was swarmed defensively. As we wind down toward the end of the third quarter, seven catches for 78 yards on the afternoon for Jackie Harris. And boy, is he having himself a nice afternoon. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Packers 14, Eagles 10. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Packer fans have had plenty to chew on as they take a look as the start of the fourth quarter gets underway. Packers on top, 14 to 10. <laughs> Peyton Bush, Sterling Sharp. I love it. Sterling for president. Second and four. Favre. And Favre wisely runs out of bounds. And again, this kid, talk about a red badge of courage, playing with those bruised ribs. And again, we still have yet to get a definitive report from the Green Bay staff, but it's clear that he is really playing heroically with the injured ribs. I think Brett Favre learned his lesson from throwing that interception at the other end of the field, that there was nobody open, don't throw the ball, you've got the lead, best run it out of bounds or throw it out of bounds, don't deliver the ball if it's in a questionable situation. I'm sure that's what Coach Mike Hogram told him when he went to the sideline. A gain of one brings up a third and three. Packers five of six on third down conversions. Just going sharp. Make it six of seven. First down by Sterling Sharp. Mike Golick on the tackle. Despite the double team. Now we talked with Mike Holmgren about the difference between Sterling Sharp and Jerry Rice, of course, whom he's got some familiarity with. Two different kind of receivers, but he says this guy Sharp certainly needs to be recognized as one of the league best. Different running styles. Jerry is the classic, executes every route perfectly. His breaks are always right. Sterling Sharp, oh, not quite as, as perfect in terms of routes, but very big, very strong. Take a look at the traffic here. He's ahead of Max McGee, moving up the Packers all-time receiving list. On the ground, and what a hit that time. My Thompson. goodness. Clyde Simmons flattened. Daryl Thompson, and I know Thompson's trying to get up like he's not hurt, but you know his bell was rung that time. When you get hurt, you got to get up and pretend you're not hurt. You can't let the defensive guys think they've gotten to you. Even when you don't want to smile, you got to give a little smile. Even when you're crying inside, you're smiling on the outside. <laughs> well, he's crying on the inside. You can best believe Clyde Simmons throwing that 2 8 around. Second and 12. Harris in motion. Floater that time intended for Jackie Harris, but deflected as Seth Joyner was applying some pressure. <sighs> Up next here on CBS is the second half of our doubleheader action featuring the LA Rams against the eight and one Dallas Cowboys. Battle for tops in the NFC West between the New Orleans Saints and the San Francisco 49ers or the Chicago Bears facing the Tampa Bay Bucks. Coming up next here on CBS. Third and 12. Packers are now 7 of 8 on third down conversions. Wes Hopkins with the tackle. Jackie Harris continuing to do the job. Eight catches for 95 yards. Brett Favre's obligation is to read the defense first. He sees that these guys are in zones, and this is a two-deep zone. He knows he's going to have an opening right in here. That's why he just dropped back, delivers the ball, reception. It's a clear case of a quarterback pre-reading. He reads downfield, two-deep zone. He knows his holes in the middle, delivers the football. He told us. That's what Coach Mike Hogan has taught him. Read the defense, deliver the ball. On first down, the ball carrier is Daryl Thompson as Thompson runs off to the right for about two. Brett Favre really doing a sensational job in Jackie Harris, his favorite receiver today, taking pressure off of Sterling Sharp. I mentioned Jackie Harris, eight catches for 95 yards. Last week, Harris had a career-high nine catches for 87 yards. 
Philly is doubling the eight. outside receivers, leaving that middle open for Jackie Harris. Second and eight. Ball at the 22, 11 36 left in the game. Packers on top by four. Far drills it. Intended receiver, Jackie Harris again, William Thomas right there on the coverage. And Richie Kotite speaks volumes of praise for William Thomas. Very quick, undersized guy, but he says he's a good coverage guy with excellent instincts. You know, we speak of Jackie Harris having a good day and Brett Favre delivering the ball well, which he certainly is, and reading that Eagle defense well. But the offensive line is keeping those Eagle defenders off them, giving him time to do that. And the Eagle defense has been spending an awful lot of time on the field today. Third and five. Complete for the first down to Sterling Sharp inside the five. Rich Miano with the stop. Once again, good line protection. Take a look at it. That's Brett Favre in the middle of your screen, dropping back. The pocket pushes those ends to the outside. He steps up, delivers the ball low to the ground so that the backfield, the defensive back, has no opportunity to intercept the ball or hurt his receiver. The guy goes down, catching the ball. That's Sterling Sharp hitting the ground, protecting his body. First and goal from the three. Play action. Thompson, touchdown, Packers. Mississippi nicely executed plays when it works well it looks so easy of course it's not but right now you'd have to say that the Green Bay Packers with Brett Favre are executing perfectly Mike Holgram's offense first receiving touchdown of the season for Thompson Jackie on for the point after and the Packers expand their lead over the Philadelphia Eagles the score 21 10 far to Thompson. This game summary is sponsored by McDonald's. Brett Favre continuing his superb play this afternoon. Workman was outstanding in the first half. He's out. Sterling Sharp outstanding both halves. And the Packers in front of the Eagles. 21 10 and a short kick. Sekahima taking it from the 23. And Tim Houck along with Carl Carter. And Bud Carson. Not a long day. Looking at the touchdown again, notice that the defensive backs and linebackers are offset to the weak side where the backs who catch the ball are on the strong side. They had no opportunity to get over there and make that play. Poor defensive position, good call on offense, threw the ball to the right fellow. 10-28 left in the game, Cunningham still at the helm, first and 10 from the 24. To Sherman. Heath Sherman, first down. Heath Sherman could be gone. Roland Mitchell can't get him in time. Touchdown, Philadelphia Eagles. A 75-yard run after the catch by Heath Sherman. Heath <laughs> Sherman, the bowling ball is rolling. <laughs> and that quickly, Philadelphia tightens it up how quickly things can turn about he's sherman the running back that's supposed to be the short yardage guy the third and two guy the fourth and one guy has turned out to be the most successful runner from scrimmage today for the philadelphia eagles and the point after is good so the eagles have cut the packers lead with that 75-yard run, a career-long for Heath Sherman. 
Packer faithful have plenty to cheer about until that 75-yard run by Heath Sherman after the pass, the screen pass from Randall Cunningham. His previous career long had been 37 yards. And it's a 21-17 ball game, 10-13. Left in the game, James Brown along with George Stark. Happy to have you along. We've got a ball game here. Ruzic with the foot into it. Corey Harris from the four. And Harris is hit hard and smashed. Give the credit to number 55, Ken Rose, with a solid hit. Let's take another look at the screen pass to touchdown. That's Heath Sherman. He's lined up on the right. The quarterback's going to drop back. He will pretend that he's pass blocking. Then he kind of slips out. He's got two offensive linemen in front of him. The center makes a great block. The offensive guard throws his body, ties up Buckley. That's all you have to do. Play action. You got two linemen out there. They both execute a block. The running back is there. Touchdown. Nice play. First and 10 for the Packers from the 12. Far. Drills it complete to Sharp for the first down. Sharp. Trying to break the tackle of Wes Hopkins, but Hopkins drops him. And a flag on the play, maybe a face mask. Personal foul, tackling by the face mask. Number 58, 15 yards, first down. That means it's intentional, JB. You have the inadvertent grasp of the face mask, which of course is five yards. Then you have intentional, which is 15 yards. The officials ruled that intentional. And had he let it go, it might have been accidental. He could have said, just give me five. He kept a holding on to it. The official says, no, buddy, that's 15 yards. Hopkins knew he had a strong man to the with. Nine. Six catches for 82 yards for Sterling Sharp today. First and 10, ball at the 49 of Green Bay. 9.35, left in the game. Far dumps it off to Sidney. And Sidney, good second and third effort. You talk about the need to keep those knees and legs driving. That's an indication. Six yards picked up on a play. Not just knees and legs, but leverage. You got that shoulder down. You got that good forward lean, and you're driving. You're driving. Nice play. That's a veteran. That's Harry Sidney. Big fella. Big fella. He's got that, got that strength. And right now, he knows his team needs whatever you can to win. They're all in there together. Part of that San Francisco 49er connection. Holmgren and staff knew what they were getting in Sydney. An experienced guy who knew the system and could show by leadership. And some good defensive Thompson. leadership that time by William Thomas. May have gone to the well one too many times on that play. And there is a late flag on the play. Defensive Holmgren, number 98. Tommy Jeter. So Philadelphia's defense hurting itself twice here with penalties. The face mask on Hopkins. And now the holding on Tommy Jeter. Tommy yeah, Jeter, Texas. Tommy Jeter's a rookie. That may be a rookie mistake. <laughs> but William Thomas certainly was all over that wraparound draw. He says, we've seen that play enough today, guys. You're not getting any more yardage on that. gets constructive criticism after every game from the coach Mike Holmgren and the quarterback coach Dave Mariucci but also from his father a football coach down in Mississippi who calls him up with a bit more general constructive criticism he says his dad put a satellite in so he could always see his son's games no matter where they are and give him his written critique after the game On first and ten Thompson running hard Darrell Thompson Ahead for a six-yard gain, should bring up a second and four. Byron Evans on the tackle. Eight, ten, and counting left in the game. Green Bay on top, 21-17. Daryl Thompson in 
On the relief for Vince Workman, who left in the first half with a shoulder injury. Thompson, 11 carries, 56 yards. There's Vince Workman. And the Packers haven't missed a beat. White got a hand on that one. Hey. Reggie White may only have five and a half sacks for the season coming into the game, but he also had 31 quarterback hurries to his credit coming into today. That's top of your screen. That's Reggie White gets his hand up and knocks the ball away. You know, Reggie White doesn't have a lot of sacks this year, and, and of course that's because the offense double teams him and triple teams him. They feel you've got to stop Reggie White or you have no opportunity to execute anything offensively. So he gets so much attention that the other guys on the defensive line get to make the sacks. Third and four. Packers eight of nine on third down conversions, and there is a flag. We'll see which side is guilty. All start, several members of the offensive line move before the snap. Five yards, it's still third down. He mentioned several members of the offensive line. <laughs> but I tell you, this line has really done a strong job today. Take a look at what that line has led. 128 rushing yards, Philadelphia prides itself on no one being able to get 100 yards rushing on them. Today, the Green Bay line has done the yeoman's work. Boy, a magnificent day, really, blocking offense. Nearly eight yards of play average. My goodness. And there is the first sack of the day. The graphic will now have to be changed as Andy Harmon comes in to record his fourth sack of the season. I think I jinxed them, <laughs> JP, talking about how good they're blocking, both run and pass-wise. That was Andy Harmon. Andy Harmon's of that, that kind of three-tackle rotation they have in there. Harmon, Garlic, and Jeter. Just a nice play. How many has stayed with it? That's Frank Winters, number 52 to left guard. He went over. Second punt of the afternoon for Brian Wagner, as I mentioned earlier. Replacing the cut, Paul McJulian. By Sikahima back to receive. And Sikahima waiting for the fair catch. spotted near the 11 36 yard punt 4.7 hang time that's nolan cromwell his special teams have been better today he's taken a lot of criticism this week last week they lost to the giants primarily because his guys the special teams didn't play well today they're playing well no fumbles no turnovers no penalties no punt block no fumble punts no muff snaps Rich Kotite squad has 6.44 left in the ball game, trailing 21-17. A touchdown needed to win. Heath Sherman. And Sherman to the left side for about four. Brown and Yurkovich leading the tackles. There's Robert Brown, guy who lives in Fairfax, Virginia, does a lot of training down at George Mason University. He used to work out quite a bit with Dexter Manley when Manley was playing. I think he's in school also about to get his degree from uh, from a school back east. Second and six. Looking for Barnett. And there's a flag on the play. Defensive interference should be called on Terrell Buckley that time as Barnett had to ease up in his run trying to come back for the pass. Terrell Buckley certainly ran into him. Had Terrell Buckley been going for the ball, been looking back, since both the offensive and defensive player have an equal opportunity to make the catch, it wouldn't have been a penalty. But in this case, that's not true. Barnett was free. Buckley is just defending him, hits him too early. That's a penalty. Point well taken. Had he looked back, 
And Chuck Cecil was right there waiting to apply the big hit. Chuck Cecil <laughs> 10. Got hit him too. Ball at the 46 of Green Bay. Flea Flicker. Cunningham looking deep. Oh, and another interference call. This time it will be on Roland Mitchell as Barnett is saying, wait a minute. It should be down at the one. We'll see where they spot it. It certainly should be down at the one, and that is a penalty, two penalties in a row to help the Eagles go the entire length of the field. Defense is pass interference, first and goal. Well, just as we mentioned, don't count them out yet. This is a flea flicker, JP, when the black goes into the line and flicks it back to the quarterback. Randall's throwing downfield. Just sometimes you figure you've got to save the touchdown and hope that your defense can keep them out of the end zone. First and goal. Ball marked at the two. Out of the eye formation. The pitch to Walker. And Walker. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Herschel Walker looked to have been stopped at least twice and used that strength to drive across. Well, Roland Mitchell is a defensive back. When he hit Herschel Walker at the four-yard line, he was just trying to hold him up to get support from his linebackers to come up and push Herschel back. He got no support from his linebackers or defensive line. He, of course, couldn't hold Herschel, who weighs 30, 40 pounds more than he does touchdown. Herschel Walker should always be able to score if a cornerback hits him high on the four-yard line, which, of course, he did. Sixth rushing touchdown of the season for Herschel, and the point after is good. So Philadelphia goes out in front, 5.45 left in the ball game. The Eagles on two humongous penalties capitalized. That's Roland Mitchell hitting Herschel at the four. He can't hold him by himself. He's looking for support, gets no support. Herschel spins, breaks free, touchdown. Again, Herschel's coming to the right. We can see the defensive lines here. Good stick by Roland Mitchell. Hits him at the five. He's trying to hold. He's looking for it. He's looking around. Somebody help me. No one gets there to give any support. Herschel's a big, big running back. Spins, takes him in the end zone. Herschel Walker, a well-chiseled and strong individual, knocking in what listed at 225, and Roland Mitchell at 195. But Mitchell may as well have been trying to stop a Mack truck. You know, last week it was the offense via interceptions thrown by Brett Favre that really got the Giants back in the game. This week, it's poor plays by their, the defensive backs. Two penalties, and the Eagles went the length of the field, and now they're, they're behind at this point. Ruzek set to kick off for the Eagles. 5.45 left in the ball game. Harrison Brooks are back for the Packers. And this will be Harris from the 11. And Harris is roped, all tied, and dropped by Saran Stacy. Don't forget, coming up next is the second half of our double header action today featuring the Rams against the Dallas Cowboys and the New Orleans Saints and the San Francisco 49ers. Others will see the Chicago Bears take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Double header action, second half coming up next on CBS. Philadelphia with three timeouts remaining, Green Bay with two as Mike Holmgren looks down the chart to see what may work. Packers will be starting from their own 21, first and 10. Escapes Evan. Intended receiver was Sterling Sharp. John Booty with the nice defensive play. 
You know, Brett Favre didn't drop very deep. That was a just a three three step drop and deliver. Sterling Sharp is trying to do one of those deep crossing patterns we spoke about earlier today. But that was man coverage. Wasn't open. Good defense. Pass a little too late that time, as you saw in that replay. Sterling Sharp can swat aside most defensive backs in this league. Second and ten. Out of the pro set. Sharp in motion. Far shovels it forward. And a flag on the play as Andy Harmon drops him. And Favre still hurting from the first quarter rib injury. Boy, this is one tough nose. Well, the illegal touching by number 75. The penalty is loss of down. Third down. And Favre trying to shovel that one forward to Ken Rutgers. And the Packers pay the price, losing a down. That's a fierce pass for us. That's Clyde Simmons on the right of your field. Goes inside, breaks through, puts the initial pressure. Of course, Reggie's right behind him. Brett Favre taking the fall. He's already hurt. He's probably hurting more now. Deliver that pass. Ken Records touched it. That's a Benson infraction. So it's third and 10. 527 left. Eagles on top. 24-21. Favre back to pass. Throws a pick. And Evans. Interception of the year for Byron Evans. And just like last week, as we mentioned against the Giants, the Packers kept it close but lost it at the end. And here the youngster, Brett Favre, throws another interception. Well, he does throw an interception here, and it is two in the fourth quarter. It's just a badly delivered pass in the double coverage. He's trying to make the tackle right now. When, when, you throw, when you're a quarterback and you make a mistake and you try to make that play to make yourself feel better, not a good pass and threw it into double coverage. The Packers have got to be able to play four quarters if they're going to beat an NFC East team. They've been in there and they lose it late in the game. All at the 20 of Green Bay, first and 10. 5-17 left in the game. Sherman and he's Sherman. Come back up with it, Leroy Butler. Leroy Butler recovers. Unfortunately, that is a big play for the Green Bay Packers, not the Philadelphia Eagles. Heads up play, good run. Gives Green Bay another shot at it. First and 10 from the 27. Far to pass. Throws it complete to Sydney. here at Milwaukee County Stadium, 56,000 strong for this interdivision matchup between the Packers and the Eagles. Philadelphia on top, 24-21. 4.45 and counting left in the ball game. Brett Favre has another chance, J.B. You know when he went to the sideline after that interception, he was praying, just give me another chance. He's now gotten another chance. He wants to win this game, but he certainly doesn't want to throw another interception. A gain of seven makes it second and three. Far looking up top for Sharp. And Sterling Sharp has it. A big first down and deep. Into Eagles territory. That's Sterling Sharp on John Booty. We spoke about the fact that the Eagles will double cover him. This is Booty up early. Sharp is too big for him to bump and run. He swats him out of way, beats him to the outside, looks the ball in. Nice play. That's number.
number 38, Rich Miano, who had him deep. Difficult to, dub, to double cover a guy when he can push aside the bump and run guy who's taking him at the line of scrimmage. Sterling Sharp can. You see the numbers on the afternoon. He's on pace. He's got his seven catches for the afternoon. First and ten. Ball at the 32. Flag on the play. Out of bounds with the catch, but there is a flag on the play. Kittrick Taylor held on to it, but out of bounds. Frank Winters is signaling defensive holding. Holding number 38. That's Rich Miano. Way to go, Frank Winters. Brett Barb's on the road roommate, I might add. second and two. Daryl Thompson running like folks thought he would have in year one. This could be the game, JB, where he comes of age. Vince Workman is hurt. No fault of his own, but they've been trying to work Daryl Thompson into this offense. This could be his game. This could be the time where he moves up. Second and two. Ball at the 19. Thompson. And Daryl Thompson looks like he has enough for the first down from this angle. And he does. 225 and counting. Left in the ball game. Daryl Thompson, who came on in relief of the injured Vince Workman and has put up some workmanlike numbers here in the second half. And Philadelphia, not aware that Washington is losing, certainly was hoping to capitalize with the victory today. Coming into the game, tied for second place in the NFC East with the Redskins at 6-3. and three. Here, JB, going back to Sterling Sharp, he's got seven catches today, which puts him on pace to take over the Art Monk receiving record. packed house here at Milwaukee County Stadium and Mike Holmgren was actually asking the question why do we have to play down in Milwaukee and folks have told him hey tradition tradition my man and in fact the Packers have been very successful down here many teams don't like coming in here to play and I'm sure Rich Kotite may be among them one of the reasons again both benches on the same side of the field you'll see the number of yards allowed the Eagles have been allowing only 84 yards rushing Green Bay with 139 so far. Thompson. A gain of about five on a play by Daryl Thompson. 144 left in the game and Bud Carson not accustomed to seeing his defensive unit run on like it's being run on today. But it's an emotionally charged Packers unit. Like, no, that's Craig Stadler, isn't it? Oh no, it's Mike Holgram. <laughs> Amazes me how much it was like Craig Stadler. Second and five. Far rolling. And runs out of bounds with it. Couldn't find an open guy, so Brett Favre smartly takes it out of bounds. 140. Well, smartly, that is, if he wants to protect the ribs. You may think, yeah, to keep the clock going is the best thing, but when you've got bruised ribs, you go to safety. Well, plus, I don't think we'll be seeing him delivering any balls if he's not sure any longer. Two interceptions this fourth quarter, three last week. I think if he were to throw another interception, he might go off the wrong side of the field. Be afraid of Coach Mike Holgram. Third and seven. Ball mark at the 13. Thompson in motion. Out of bounds. 
The receiver was Sanjay Beach, but he caught it out of bounds. So Chris Jackie will come on to attempt the field goal to try and even things up with 134 left in the ball game. 24-21, Eagles lead. And this will be a 31-yard field goal attempt by Chris Jackie, Don Makowski holding. And we've got a tie ball game. Packers refusing to lay down as Mike Holmgren's bunch continuing to play inspired football. Rich Kotite barking out instructions there. In the NFC Central, Minnesota clearly for real. A victory by the Packers today would help them immensely as they look to gain ground. And I'm sure you don't find too much of an argument, George Stark, from folks that the toughest conference around the NFC East, as I mentioned earlier, Philadelphia and Washington coming into today's contest, tied at 6-3 and three in second place. Washington right now losing to Kansas City. Philadelphia hoping to capitalize on that. It would be a great opportunity for Philadelphia to go up one on Washington. And uh, I'm sure they thought that today was was going to be the easiest of the of the six games they've gotten coming up they had coming up and uh, they've got themselves in a dog fight which is what they wanted to try to avoid but here it is we saw that shot of rich Kotite. the one thing you get in talking with him is that he's a straight shooter second heaver from the two and solid job done by green bay's special teams Corey Harris also had a little help on that play from Carl Carter. Green Bay special teams have been solid all day. I mean, the biggest special teams play, of course, was the field goal we just saw executed. But their punting teams have been good all day, and their coverage teams have simply been fantastic. So Randall Cunningham will come out with 125 left in the game. Eagles starting from their own 11. Eagles with two timeouts remaining. Green Bay with two timeouts remaining. Roger Ruzik could decide it. He has a season long of 50 this year against Denver that at the vet. Two tight end formation. Cunningham hands off to Walker. And Herschel Walker bullying his way. Herschel Walker up near the 20. A gain of nine on a play by Herschel Walker. Last week, just 47 yards on 20 carries. Running hard today. Herschel's chalked up 47 yards again, but this time on 11 carries. Green Bay wants the ball back. They want to stop the run, but they don't want to give up the big pass play. Second and one. Walker. say they haven't rolled away the official signal it is Packers football as Herschel Walker coughs it up his first fumble recovery of the season 43 seconds left in the game Johnny Holland who they say the Green Bay Packers defensive team is their leader their Mr. Consistency the guy that makes big plays his first fumble recovery but he's been their leader all year long all at the 23 of Philadelphia first and 10 
Jackson. Hit twice and finally stopped. No gain on the play. That's Herschel in the middle of the screen. He's going to the right. He sees a little crack. He's trying to get through. The ball just appears to slip out of his hands. Didn't look like anybody touched it or punched it or knocked it out. It just slipped out of his hands. On the other side of that, when you see Darrell Thompson carrying the ball right now, that lesson is not lost on him. He's holding that ball with two hands. He may get no yards, but he's not going to drop that ball. So timeout called with three seconds remaining. Green Bay with one timeout. They will give Chris Jackie the opportunity to win this game. Chris Jackie tied the team record of 12 consecutive games with the field goal in each of those 12, but missed an opportunity to set a new record when he missed a 49-yarder last week. This will be the field goal for Jackie to remember. will be a 41-yard field goal attempt. It's up. Long enough. And good. Touchdown. With no time remaining. with the 41-yard boot, leaving no time left on the clock. And the Packers come away victorious as Mike Holmgren sees his team improve to four and six in the NFC Central Division. Eagles drop to six 